Welcome to episode 52 of the 24-Hour Hustle Show, and today we got special guest, Frank Walker. Welcome to the 24-Hour Hustle Show. I'm your host, Anthony Freeze, and this is the show where we get the opportunity to sit down with amazing guests, find about their story, their struggles, and also their success. If this is the very first time you're finding out about us, definitely make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the bell so that you can get notified every single time I post. But today we got special guest Frank Walker on the show. I'm definitely glad we got the opportunity to connect. Um, like I said before, when we actually got a chance to connect over a cup of coffee over at Panera Bread, I felt like we should have known each other for years. Like, I felt like we known each other for some time. So uh, I definitely love uh, the conversation that we had. I'm looking forward to the conversation that we're going to have here. I think you'll be able to provide a ton of value here. So welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks yeah, for having me. Absolutely. So for people who may not know who you are, why don't you give us your name, your background, and where you're from? Frank Walker. I'm originally from Institute, West Virginia, a small town outside of Charleston, West Virginia. Went to West Virginia State College, which is now West Virginia State University, into Marshall University for my graduate degree and to WVU for my law degree. My wife and I moved here in 2000, and we've been here ever since. Nice. I'm an attorney practicing in Pittsburgh. also practice in Morgantown, West Virginia. I do federal and state criminal defense. A little bit of personal injury, but mostly criminal defense. All right, cool, cool. So now that we got the background stuff out of the way, now we can really get down deep All right, into let's the go. conversation. Let's go. Now let's we can go. really get into it. So why, so why law? Like, why become an attorney? Why? What inspired you to do? Like, did you watch an episode of Law and Order? Like, what happened? <laughs> what what, in, what inspired this? Well, my my older cousin is an attorney in Detroit, Michigan. My older sister is an attorney in D.C. She was a prosecutor in Baltimore. So growing up, she and I would argue all the time. Mm -hmm. I would always lose. So I would try to figure out a way, you know, I got to figure, I got to hone my argument skills. So when I go to different spots, hanging out with my friends, I always try to look at things objectively. Okay, I see their side, I see this side, but how would a reasonable person look at this thing? And I always try to just step back, remove myself from the situation, and figure out what's the best way to solve the situation. Mm. And then I see situations in, in our neighborhood where I'm from, and growing up you know, as an African-American male, how things are sometimes unfair. And you want to figure out how can you level the playing field. And I thought the way you can level the playing field is be one of the players on the field mm -hmm. as an attorney, as a prosecutor, as a, you know, a judge. So there's natural progression for me was to start as a lawyer as a criminal defense lawyer learn the law and then defend and help other people when they're facing troubles in the law mm -hmm. and then um like what was um so was your sister involved in law or anything like that as well yeah she now growing up we were i mean we're two years apart so okay. she was two years ahead of me in law school same law school wvu so she was leaving as i was coming in so she mentored me along the way but just as, as a deciding factor, I just wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to help people. Figure out a way to help people, and the best way to do that, in my opinion, was to be a lawyer. Okay. So what kind of arguments or things were you guys trying to determine Like when every hour were younger? Everything. I mean, just, just, just any and everything. You know, it can go from... You know who's making this? Who's turn to do dishes that week? <laughs> who's making the salad on Sunday? I mean, just who's the best football? I mean, just any little small detail. We'd uh -huh. be arguing over something, and she would say, "Well, fr Frankie is my given name." So she would say, "Well, so Frankie, you know, well, what about this and what about this?" And even now, growing up, when we look at a situation, a situation, she's always coming from the prosecutor point of view. Mm. So when I have an argument, I have a trial coming up, I always give her a call and say, "Hey, what do you think about this?" And I know she's going to give me that that point of view, and I know what to expect walking in the courtroom. So it's a very good relationship that we have. Okay. And what was it like whenever you went to school and, and getting your education in this? Uh, um, like, uh, did you always want to go this route, or was there, like, a deciding moment saying, hey, I want to go to school and actually start studying law? Like, what was that process like? Well, at State, as I call it, you know, growing up, I grew up right across the campus. So going to the camp, going to the school as, as an undergraduate member, I was in, invited to serve on the Judicial Conduct Board. And there is where you go when you're a student and you get in trouble, underage drinking, or you get in trouble off campus. You got to see this board. So I got invited to sit on this board. So I'm sitting on the board, and all of a sudden, I find myself not being biased, like mm -hmm. really just looking at things objectively. Like, I can really do this. Mm -hmm. So then as I'm progressing through school, 
I'm playing ball, and I think I got injured really bad, and I'm laying on the ground, and I'm thinking to myself, well, this career is over. Yeah. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah. So it's time for me to start hitting the books. So I hit the books really well, studied, went to graduate school, did well, and then got into law school. So I, I think it started from the just judicial conduct board. Me being there on, in that board, on, in that position, seeing different types of crimes, different types of situations, it really helped me launch myself into being a lawyer. Mm-hmm. And uh, for me, who I don't, I don't have a lot of knowledge or background on this, so whenever you went to school on this, what kind of things are you learning? What kind of situations or maybe... Uh, you know, kind of demonstrations are they walking you through? Like, what is the process like going through school, learning law? What are you learning? What are they teaching? What's that process like? Well, there's a saying, as a, there's three years of law school. Now, the first year, they say that they scare you to death. In the third year, I mean, the second year, they work you to death. And then the third year, they bore you to death. So true. <laughs> as a first year, you're terrified. You don't know if you're coming, staying, if you're getting kicked out or what. Mm-hmm. You know, you're learning about archaic, Magna Carta, you know, contract law, black letter law, statutes that just were on the books for years. So I think they're teaching you how to think like a lawyer. And when you leave and you go into your field and you get hooked up with a mentor or a program, that's when you learn how to be a lawyer. Law school is just about how to think like a lawyer. But when you're out and learning, getting your education, getting your experience, that's when you learn how to be a lawyer. But law school is tough. It's not for the faint of heart. I see I try to discourage people. Like, listen, if you're going there just to try to make money, try to get a, a nice paying job, go do something else because mm-hmm. it's not that's not what it's for. But if you're going there, you want to make a difference and learn how to make a difference and be an advocate for someone because, I mean, you get that call two in the morning or, or on an afternoon or on a Sunday, someone's frantic for their son or daughter. You know, you need it's quick thinking. Okay, mm-hmm. what do you need to do? Where are they? What can they say? The police are at the door. Don't say anything. I'll be there. You know, just. Certain things you need to figure out how to assess the situation, and that's how we were taught to think critically as law students and later on critically as an attorney. So what was maybe like your biggest challenge in going through school or getting this started or, you know, just, uh, you know, in, in learning all these different things? What would you say is like the biggest challenge in all of that? I think the biggest challenge is understanding that your, pl- your, your path isn't everyone else's path, mm-hmm. but you could still be connected. Everyone who goes through law school, they're not going to be a criminal defense lawyer. They may be a tax lawyer. They may be a property lawyer. But eventually, you may need them later mm-hmm. on. So it's cool when I can pick up the phone. I got a trust issue that someone's calling me. One of my current criminal defense clients are calling me saying, hey, my mother has this will or trust. I don't know anything about it. Can you help her out? They think, you're a lawyer. You know everything. We don't. Mm-hmm. So I say, well, I have a friend who I went to law school with. He or she practices here. Here's a number. Give them a call. But as you're going through law, it's just you're so competitive. Mm. You go through school, you're like, well, I just want to be the first. I want to be the biggest, the brightest. I want to get out first. But it's not about that. I mean, you make the right relationships, you can really set yourself up later on. Yeah, absolutely. I would say even you know, even in general, having those relationships and building those those friendships up helps in the long run regardless. Oh, yeah. Um, because there's always going to be somebody that knows something that you don't know. Yep. Uh, or they have a strength that maybe a weakness area for you. So any any time in general, like if you can build those relationships with anybody, it's always helpful. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then, um, you know, kind of really getting into the things that you're doing today, you actually even have your own private practice. Yes. Um, so what inspired you to start your own private practice? And for that, what was maybe the initial challenge or struggle that you may be facing getting that started? Well, my, my father inspired me. Now, I didn't know... The full story. I just know the story from a child's perspective. So, okay. you know, my dad, young when I was younger, he was a chemical operator at, at this company called FMC. Operator, engineer. I, I don't know the difference. He worked at a chemical plant. Yeah. So, he's making good money, doing well. My mother's in, I think, a registered nurse at the time, or maybe just got out of school, nursing school. And it's five of us, five kids. So he's working, and eventually he comes home and says, "You know, I don't work there anymore." I'm like. I don't know. I think I'm maybe 10, 12 years old. I'm like, what happened? Mm. Well, I just don't work there anymore. So his friend comes over and he hands him this envelope. Hey, we took up a collection for you. I hand him an envelope of, of money. Mm. I was like, oh, that's a lot of money. He just threw it on there. It's like, oh, it's $50. It was, mm. But it was all at once. It's like, wow, they just fired him. He had five kids and a wife. They didn't care about him. So now he had to go out and start his own construction company. And then he started you know, working security at night. He hustled. 
to get through to pay for his kids. So then later on, I'm at a law firm. I, I get licensed. I go to the Office of Conflict Counsel. We handle the conflicts between the public defender's office and anyone else. You know, two people in the car. There's a gun in the car. I say it's yours. You say it's mine. Neither one of us can afford an attorney. Public defender can't represent both of us. So one would go to the conflict counsel office. So I started there, handled those conflicts for a while, then went to a firm. Always in my mind, I'm thinking, no one cares about me. They don't care about my family. I got to go out and do it on my own like my dad did. So I went out, saved up the money, made the jump. So I'm, first couple months, I'm struggling. I'm calling my dad. He's like, stick through it, stick through it. So finally, you know, things start working out well. And moving on, you know, here I am eight, ten years later. So maybe about four years ago, I called my dad and I told him, I was like, you don't know you really inspire me. They fired you. And I, so he lets me go on and on and on. He goes, uh-huh. he goes, son, I got something to tell you. I said, what? He goes, I actually quit that job. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said, well, why did you tell me that? I said, well, I didn't want to tell you. I want to start my own contracting business and seafood market, which he did. And he did really well. But in my mind, I'm thinking they fired him. So yeah. that motivated me through all these years, not knowing it didn't happen that way. But again, that was my perception. Mm-hmm. But that really motivated me, regardless whether he got fired <laughs> or stepped out on his own, he was required to make it happen and hustle for his own. And I knew that no one was going to make, no one's going to take care of my family like I knew how to take care of my family. And mm-hmm. I had to do that on my own. No one's going to pay me to do that. There were some good opportunities, but I would eventually end up trading time for money, which I didn't want to do. Right. I didn't want to be in a transactional relationship with a firm while I'm working 100 hours a week. So decided to make the jump. Nice. That's a good story, yeah. too. I mean, And that's good that, you know, that inspired it uh, as well. Because it seems like even your dad had some passion to start on, you know, do something and start something of his own, too. Yep. So, and that inspired you also. Yep. Um, that's a good story for sure. Um, so so one of the things that you said was, you know, there were some struggles in the beginning of getting it started. What mm-hmm. were some of those struggles in getting it off the ground? Well, because you think you have to say yes to everything and everybody. Because you're first starting out, you're thinking – Oh, someone's coming in with money, I got to say yes. Or someone's coming with an opportunity for marketing to pay X amount of dollars for so many impressions on a website or a TV show, I have to say yes. I didn't know the power of saying no. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the power of saying, no, I'm not really, I'm not feeling that right now. Or I know you're going to be more trouble than what it's worth. I'm just not trying to do that right now. Mm -hmm. But now I understand, I learned quickly that you have to say no. Mm -hmm. More often times than not. And there'll be some lean weeks, some lean months, but... In the long run, your peace of mind is, is is worth it because you're saying yes to everything. You got everybody calling you now. We're so connected, you know, cell phones, Facebook. People they'll Facebook you, they'll tweet you, mm. they'll message you on Facebook. <laughs> Let's see what else. So what else have people done? They've just showed up at the office, uh-huh. and then the people don't care about weekends. They're calling you too. Uh-huh. I mean, I got so many on my block list. Woo. <laughs> Woo. You you gotta find a line where it's like this is personal and then there's yeah, business I can take yeah, care of. Yeah, and then you, you you speak you see older attorneys and you wonder why when you first start out they're not friendly or they're not you know they're just a little bit you know, they have an edge to them. It's, it's because people can push you to the point where you just you're like listen I can't talk to you right now and it may come off as being rude but really in order to carve out space for yourself and your family you have to make you have to draw that line mm-hmm. you just have to absolutely absolutely. Um, so what was it like maybe building up your clientele? I mean, who who would you say yes to then? I think the clients who I make, I try to make a difference between clients who want me and clients who need me. Mm. The clients who want me are the people who've been in trouble over and over and over again. And they want my services because they've heard of, they heard of my reputation or they think of my reputation of getting people out of a bad situation, which I can and sometimes. But there are certain instances, certain instances where you got to go. Like, yeah, like, right. You keep doing the same thing over and over again. And I'm a defense attorney. Uh-huh. You got to go. Uh-huh. Now, the clients who need me, they're in a bad situation. Wrong place, wrong time. Someone else had something not supposed to have. They didn't know about it. Now, all of a sudden, they're about to lose a scholarship, lose a job because someone else had something and they're not taking responsibility for it. Mm-hmm. How can you get me out of the situation? And if you can, I will never be back again. Those are the clients I want mm-hmm. because they will respect your time, respect your advice, and respect your space. So when you're able to tell them, listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to write a letter of apology, do community service, do a drug and alcohol evaluation, comply with all the recommendations, be here at this point in time, you know, do this, do that. They're doing everything. Johnny on the spot because they know they need to get out of the situation because they have so much riding on it. 
those are the clients I want because they are respectful and they don't want they don't want to be in your office. They don't want a criminal defense attorney. Mm. They and then I'll see them later on. Hopefully we get a good result. I see them later on. They come up to me. Thank you, Mr. Walker. I appreciate that. I'm now a doctor or I'm now a dentist or, or a preacher or a teacher or whatever. Because you got me out of that situation, I really appreciate that. Those are the clients I want. Mm, that's awesome, and that's a good. That's that. Those are the kind of people that you do truly want to fight for, and 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 you know add some type of value to them to be able to put their their lives in the in the right on the right track. Yep. Um, and that's awesome that you're able to do that. Um, that that definitely is great what you do. Um, something that I asked you when we sat down before, um, and I always like to make this reference because uh, I just seen this movie recently was the Devil's Advocate, mm-hmm. um, and in that movie, uh, Keanu Reeves' character pretty much is a. I'm I'm not quite sure what kind of attorney, but he's a lawyer mm-hmm. and he takes on these cases for people that does things that they definitely did. <laughs> and um, we had a really good laugh. Okay, I remember and, the question. And you, and, you, and, you sh- and you shared some really good stories on that. Yeah. So, so and, I, and I know the people want to know too, have you ever taken on a case where you were like, man, you? I know you did it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. There are cases you take on, you look at the facts and you're like, okay, come on now. Your mom was there. She saw it. You got DNA, your fingerprints. It's on film, and you confess to it. And you go sit here and tell me that you didn't do it. Okay, I'm going to respect that. Uh-huh. I'm going to respect that. However, I got to look at you through the lens of the state and federal constitution. Mm-hmm. And under those documents, you are entitled to representation. You are entitled to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. And that is my job. That's my job. When It's just me and you sitting, and you got the whole state or the whole government on the other side trying to trying to prosecute you and convict you, I'm the only thing stopping them from doing that. I can stand up to that challenge. I'm willing to do that. However, if you want me to get you in a position to where you're not going to spend the rest of your life in jail, I can do that too. My recommendation to you in that situation would be, <laughs> listen, what's the quickest way for you to get home? Right. You know, yeah. you want to try and impress everybody like, nah, I ain't do it. I ain't do that. I got Frank Walker. We good. We're going to rumble. Yeah. Nah, Jack. <laughs> and, and I would, you, you ask any client of mine, mm-hmm. any client of mine, they will tell you, man, Frank gave me that speech. He, he held his keys up in front of me. He gave me the keys. And what I do, I was like, listen, these are the facts. This is the evidence. Here's my recommendation. What do you want to do? I don't know. What would you do, Mr. Walker? Well, let me tell you what I'm going to do after this case. <laughs> Pull my keys out. I shake them. And after this case, I'm going home. Mm. I need you to understand that. Now, if you don't make the right decision, you may not go home for a long time. Mm. I need you to understand that. This is not, you know, what your boys are telling you who happen to be in jail with you wearing the same red jumpsuit, but you're going to take their advice. That's a whole nother story. But I'm telling you, this is the best advice for you. If you tell me to go rumble, we can go rumble. Now, there are times I give that speech, they say, no, we want to go rumble. We go rumble, and we win. And I run out that courtroom before they change their mind. Mm. You know, but there's a situation where, listen, this is my advice. I'm telling you what to do. And they say, you know what? You're right. I'm going to do that. Mm. And they're thankful. And I've seen guys five, ten years later. You remember me? Yeah, man, I remember that case. Hey, man, I really appreciate that. Mm. Because otherwise, I'd still be in there. I'd be doing life. You know, you gave me numbers instead of letters. People appreciate that. They may not appreciate it now, but nine years and 364 days when they're up for parole in a couple days, they'll they'll appreciate that. Yeah, Yeah. and and, and you can definitely tell that you truly care about their well-being. Yes, you have to. Because you have have to give it to them real. mm -hmm. I mean, you got attorneys out there telling you, oh, man, I, I can get you off, man. I can do this. I can do that. Just give me your money. Listen, people hate attorneys already. I'm not. I'm not trying to give you another reason to hate attorneys. I just got to give it to you real. Mm. And so, yeah. So on that point, what's like uh, from your perspective? What are some of maybe the biggest challenges or people maybe misinterpret it uh, when it comes to lawyers or or something that you are maybe constantly trying to you know telling people like no that's not like that at all that's not how I am this is kind of how I operate maybe you see somebody else doing something that's kind of giving you a bad name what's kind of like your uh, thoughts on stuff like that well I think most people think lawyers know everything they have unlimited amount of money and unlimited amount of time and all those are false. At least for me. <laughs> At least for me, they're all false. Mm. I don't know everything. I don't have an unlimited amount of money. And I don't have an lim- lim- unlimited amount of time. And you have to 
communicate that effectively to the client because otherwise they're going to presume those things and also they think public defenders aren't lawyers i know that's kind of you know off off topic to your questions but question, clients will come to me and say are you a are you a public defender or are you a real lawyer listen mm-hmm. Public defenders are actual lawyers. Mm-hmm. They are lawyers. They are licensed to practice law, and they mm-hmm. are very good. The perception from you sitting there is that they don't have a lot of time for you, therefore they're not a real lawyer. But they are, and they are very, very good. Now, as a private defense attorney, I'm also in a position where I'm appointed to a lot of cases where I'm paid by the court. I'm a court-appointed lawyer. And people say, well, you're court-appointed. You can't represent me. It's like, oh, yes, I can. I, I can do what you're asking me to do, or otherwise I wouldn't be here. Mm-hmm. So the biggest thing... The misperception is that if you're appointed, you're not working as hard for that client. That, that's, that's definitely not true because from the perception of the client, you may not be there all the time as if you were paid to be there all the time, 24 hours a day or visit them five times, five times a day in the jail. That's not our job. Mm-hmm. Our job is not to be your friend. Our job is to give you detached, objective advice on your situation to help you out of it. That's our job. But mm-hmm. People miscon- misconstrue us as being friends or just actually <clears throat> counselors or being like a babysitter that's that's not what we do we're not don't call me the day before you're hearing what time is my hearing tomorrow <laughs> i'm not like, answering that call it's like nah bro that's not how <laughs> this not, works i'm not answering that call uh, i'm not you know call, call the office call the office gotcha yep. gotcha yeah because i i don't know too much about this world uh and uh, as far as like you know this goes uh you know and how that works and operates and things like that that's why i'm i'm curious so um you know wh- you know wh- for somebody that maybe want to become a defense attorney uh what would what would be like some good advice that you would give them what are some things that they should look for what are some things that they maybe should be studying or looking at what what advice would you give for somebody like that do it for the right reasons a lot of people see attorneys on tv on the radio and think, oh, I want to be like that guy. I want to be on TV. I want the fame. You know, I want the notoriety. Because with that, you you lose your you lose your sense of privacy. Because you can be in Giant Eagle, you know, with your kids. Mm. Someone comes, oh, I saw you on TV. Hey, I want to talk to you about my case, man. I've been trying. That's the favorite line I hear all the time. <laughs> I've been trying to call you. Mm-hmm. I've been trying to call you. You don't want to. You want to do it for that reason. Because mm-hmm. you know, once that's gone, or if that doesn't appear, then now what? You've done it for the wrong reasons. I think you should inter- you should intern for either the public defender's office or the district attorney's office, preferably both, so you can see both sides of how people operate within the system. You'd be surprised that people think what we do, we're always fighting, whether actual physically or you know yelling at each other from a defense standpoint to the prosecutors. No, most of us we work very well together on the on both sides of the bar. Call the prosecutor. Sometimes you got the cell number. You're texting on weekends. Hey, what about this case? You're trying to work everything out before you go to court. So when you show up, hey, this is what we have, Your Honor. We've we've worked out this deal. We worked out this arrangement, or we stipulated to this amount of evidence to streamline the trial, so we're not taking two weeks. Otherwise, I mean, in reality, we can get it done in maybe a couple days because Mm -hmm. we worked together before the case. But intern, intern. If you got to do it for free, do it for free because it'll pay off in the long run. And also do it for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. Do it for the right reasons and get the experience early, if mm-hmm. you can, in high school. Because once you get your foot in the door, they're going to remember you when you're in college. Mm-hmm. They'll remember you when you're in law school and you're looking for a paid internship. That will help you in the long run. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And then also in running your own private practice with this, you also have been able to get your name out there real well. You've been able to utilize marketing very well. I, I, the, you, you can't go to the waterfront without seeing you. <laughs> um, like it, it, It's literally everywhere from to the billboard to the, to the shopping cart in Giant Eagle to my favorite place, going to Lowe's in the movie theater. Your commercial yeah, or ad is like right before the trailers. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I, enjoy, I enjoy the marketing piece of it. But again, that, that circles back to in the beginning, I was talking about learning how to say no. Okay. I've had advertisers come to my office tell me you had to spend, you know, five, ten thousand dollars a month to get on TV like Edgar Snyder. Yeah. I don't want to be Edgar Snyder, but in the beginning, you're thinking I want to be like Edgar Snyder. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll pay that. Then them bills hit and you open them you're up. Like, you're like, I don't want to uh, pay that. Uh, I don't want to be Edgar <laughs> Snyder. Right. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to do that. I want, I want, you know bookends on this day and that day and I want to be in this theater and that theater and you pick and choose and then you get to make them work for you as opposed to you just giving up your money and hoping that they'll do something for you they're more they're more honest that way 
mm-hmm. because now they know that you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So I, I like to pick and choose and bounce from arena to arena, whether it be movie theaters, TV, radio, billboards, shopping carts, bus stops. I like to be all over the place. So mm-hmm. that, that's the goal. Yeah. So it's fun. And I have, and I have a, an easy name to remember, an easy name to spell. Right. You know, you can't jack that up. Right. Hopefully you right. can't jack that up. Right. But, you know, I have something that, that's you know pretty unique as far as marketing, just trying to be everywhere. Social media, mm-hmm. I, I love that aspect. That's a growing medium to advertise in, but mm-hmm. I love the media. I love the marketing aspect of it. Absolutely. And, and that's an important aspect, especially if you're running your own private practice or if you're running your own business of any sort. Being able to know how to market it and get it to your audience is one of the most important parts. I mean, you can't just have your business or your service or whatever it is you're doing and nobody knows about right, it. Right, right. So uh, I think you've been able to do that very effectively. Um, what would you say is some of like the best experiences that you've had as far as being able to get your marketing out there? I know we talked about a little bit about how you got it everywhere in the waterfront. Uh, what was that process like of, you know, getting it up on the billboards and the shopping carts and even in the theater? That's probably my favorite one. So we'll start with that one. <laughs> <laughs> the theater, I mean, I would go to movies typically. You know, I have two young kids. And we're typically running late. So I think it was like a New Year's resolution or something. And we're like, we're not, we're not going to be late this year. So it was January. So a new, new, I mean, we're still under that resolution. So we're like, oh, we're good now. We're going to be early. So we were early for one movie, super early, maybe mm-hmm. like 20 minutes. Lights are still up. So we're in there. We're sitting down. So we're like, we're very proud of ourselves. So we're looking at the screen. I see like a low, I see a national business, a national business. Then I see a local business. I was like, well, that's that's right in Pleasant Hills. How'd they get up there? Mm-hmm. So then at the end, it says, if you want to advertise, contact us. I'm calling them right from the theater. I called them, left them a message. They called back the next, I mean, maybe the next Monday. We sit down, we chat it. I said, I'll try it out for a year. And then within like a month, everyone's calling. Yeah, I saw mm-hmm. in the theater. And when Star Wars came out, it was crazy. Star uh-huh. Wars came out. Then Black Panther came out. Mm-hmm. Everyone's calling. Mm-hmm. Everyone's calling. So then I think I renewed this year for a couple other theaters. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's that's that's what I like about What's it. What's the name of this company? Because this may be some good info for I'm another. Trying, I'm trying to think. It was too. Is it? Not Info Merge. I can't think of the name of it. I have to get it back to you. Movie, is it Movie? I can't think We're of gonna it. We're going to get that information We're going to get that information. I'm going to link it Ad in here Vision, somewhere. Maybe Ad Vision. I gotta find it. Okay, I gotta find it. I'll that'll give it to you. Okay, because that'll be that'll be very good information. Yes. yes. Um, because you you got a huge audience of people that are you know gonna be checking out the trailers beforehand anyway. Yep. And for your ad to come out there and 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 people be able to find out this information if they need it, it's there yep. for them. Yep. Um, and so you already got the audience there. So absolutely. It, that absolutely. that was I, when you told me that story. I was like, that is actually a really good. Yeah. idea. I, I love the movie theater advertising because it's, it's unique. Mm-hmm. A lot of times you see like car dealerships or national ads, maybe like a realtor, but to see an attorney in there like a local that you've already seen them maybe somewhere else or mm-hmm. on social media. So now they're searching me online in the movie theater and then when they leave they come back I and mean, they go back to their phone later on. Oh, I was looking at Frank Walker. Now all of a sudden they get in trouble later on. I remember Frank Walker. So that's that's it's it's a it's a compound effect, mm-hmm. you know, oh, cumulative effect. When you see me every place, and but you don't need me now, but then later on you may need me. You remember it because it's top of mind. Right, you plant the seed early, and then by Absolutely. the time they do need it, they can use it. Absolutely. Um, Screen vision. <clears throat> Screen, Screen vision. vision, yes. Screen vision, yes. All right. Screen vision. I'm gonna yes. link. I'm gonna link that somewhere <laughs> in the description, or I just popped it up in the video yeah, somewhere. Screen vision. Um, I'm, pretty, right. I'm pretty sure it's it's screen vision. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out because yeah. I mean, if that if that can help somebody potentially get their ad out there and get some more yeah. business, um, that's that's really good information for yeah. sure. Um, another thing that you have um, that a lot of people don't have <laughs> is their own book. Yes. So uh, let's look, get, look. Look. Look what I have here, <laughs> right here. You know? Charge. Charge. Let me see. Charge with the. Yeah. Charge, charge with, with the crime, crime in West Western PA. PA. Yes. Um. So that is a phenomenal book. I didn't get a chance to read it or anything yet, but this man has come out with his own book. And you, now, where where can people get this book if uh, they were interested? You can get it on Amazon, or I think within a week the PDF will be on my website. You can like download it. For, for free and mm-hmm. you just have it on on your on your laptop your your iPhone or other device but it's definitely on Amazon you can purchase it or you can download it from the website okay yep. and what inspired this book and what was the process like of doing this book I got a call out of the blue probably five six years ago hey you know you need to write a book I'm like 
no, I don't have time to write a you, book. You had no aspirations. I had, I had no aspirations. <laughs> I had no time to write a book. He's like, yes. Think about the people you know who have written a book, you know, who are criminal defense lawyers. He's like, I don't know any. He goes, exactly. You could be the one mm. in that area. I was like, well, I'll think about it. He said, well, let me shoot you some names of some people who wrote a book. And he gave us some names of other attorneys out, you know, out west somewhere. I looked them up. I was like, oh, they have a book. Like, That's neat. I said, well, what do you do with it? He said, well, you hand it out like your business card. Mm-hmm. I said, why would I write a book and give it out for free? Yeah. He said, well, people need to know that you are the quote unquote expert in your field of law and criminal defense. Someone is choosing or trying to choose between you and someone else, and you're the one who wrote a book on it. I'm pretty sure they're going to choose you. I said, oh, okay, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. So he tells me, and we do the whole process. And he goes, I'm giving you the script. You have to promise me you will edit this thing. I said, okay, I'll do it. And he said, no, Frank, you got to promise me. I said, okay, I promise. He said, well, why do you keep asking me? He said, well, there are attorneys who have held this thing for five, six years and they've never edited. I said, I'll never do that. (laughs) A year later, two years later, five years later, he calls me like, I told you, I told you. I was like, man, you're right. I'd never had time. I'm going to get it to a, a publisher, let them edit it. Paid the money, let them do it, and he came with the finished product, and there we go. That is awesome. Yep. So what? So how? And from what you told me before, I think it's like interview style. It's interview in the style book, in the book. Very interview style, and it talked about different topics. You know what I discuss, answers to their questions, has some testimonials in there, things about me, and pretty much what to do if you get arrested. Main thing: get an attorney, whether okay. it's me or someone else. Get an attorney. This is why you need an attorney. These are some of the crime. These are some of the maximum penalties you can face if you're charged with this crime, that crime. How to get your bond reduced. So I'm all good information in there. Yeah, it's a, it's almost like a really good informational guide, just in case it, if you yourself or if you know somebody that may be in trouble, maybe you can get a lot of good information in here. Absolutely. Based on the information of Western PA, you can get that ahead of time or in the moment if somebody is in trouble it can be really good information and then if they felt like they got some good value out of it hmm, maybe i can contact frank walker and he can help me along there with you this go. there you go have you have you ever had anybody you know read the book and say man i need to get in contact with you have you gotten a lot of referrals out of this how's that been not yet i just got the whole i, I got a whole package of my past amount i gave him out for free of course your family wants some oh you wrote a book my baby wrote a book so uh-huh. i signed the form gave it to him but people have commented, like, hey, I saw your book. It was really good information. But no one, no one as a client has come back and said, hey, I read your book. I really need mm-hmm. you know, your service based on what you said in this book. Not yet. I'm sure it's coming. Not okay. yet. Now, most people will go on my website, and they'll look at some of the videos. And they'll watch those videos and say, hey, you got some really good advice on there. That's why I'm giving you a call because you mentioned this about this program and this about this charge, this about this felony. You know, My daughter has this felony now. How can you help her? Can you help her the same way you help this person? Mm-hmm. Well, let's sit down and talk. You know, let's set an appointment. We can sit down and talk. So whether it be videos or any other medium, the goal is to get people to call you and get bring them into the office, and that's the whole thing. My mindset behind marketing. Mm-hmm. Actually, and and I just thought about this idea. Like you can even take some of the questions out of the book. <clears throat> and answer them in video form. Yes. And ha- if somebody wants to search a specific question on, you know, I, I got this certain charge, and they Absolutely. Google it, and you could be one of the Absolutely. first videos that pop up. Absolutely. They watch the video. Hey, if you need additional information or services, boom, Frank Walker. There you go. And they can reach there you out. That's good advice. I like it. That, I like that it. could be something that you could definitely start to actually turn into video form and put it out that way, too. I like it. Um, actually, see, now you got the wheels turning. There you turning. go. There you go. Um, Keep them coming. Have you ever thought of doing like a book release? I have. But oh, I did gotta, you do it already? Or? Not yet, but okay. I got to get enough books. Okay. You know, I gotta, <laughs> He's like, I got to get the books released. <laughs> yeah, because I don't want to run out. I don't want to walk in there with 10 books. Like, uh, and then it's like a line. Yeah. But yeah, I want to get a, a lot of books so they can come in, you know, I can sign them all, do a book release, talk a little bit about the book, uh-huh. and you know, either hand them out or do whatever. But I definitely want to do that. Okay. Definitely want to do that. Yeah. It, not only, yeah. So, yeah, in addition to all that, like, you should definitely have, like, a, a YouTube channel, like, where there's, like, one to two minute clips or something like that, where if somebody did have a question on a certain charge they may be faced, like, they can look to you as the defense Absolutely. attorney guy. That's it. Um, That's it. Of Western PA. That's it. Because I, th- I think, if you think about social media, you know, that's the first thing we look at. We wake exactly. up in the morning, we grab a phone, look at social media. Sometimes the last thing we look at, you know, laying down, we're looking at social medias. But when you see a video and it has something to do with, you know, what you're going through that or someone in your family is going through at that time, and it's like a 90-second video, you, you'll watch 90 seconds. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, that's pretty good advice. What else does he have? 
oh man, that's really good advice. Next thing you know, it's two hours later, you still watch videos exactly. of this journey. You know, <laughs> exactly. that's you how saw, it happens. Yeah, that's how it happens, and of, on social media. So that's that's really good advice. I have a couple of videos out there, but not enough. I need to get more out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, because you can even repurpose those uh, and put those videos that are up on YouTube, put it on your Facebook. There you um, go. You know, you can even make little clips for your Instagram. So there's there's a lot of it because nobody's doing, no, not that many people, number one, has written a book right. that's a defense attorney. And there's definitely not that many people putting it out as far as on social media and videos right. and things like that. Gotta so, do um, it. Hmm. Look at you ever give me free advice. <laughs> I like it. Free consultation. <laughs> yeah, right, I like it. Right, I right like on it. the spot. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's awesome stuff. So so now that you you know you kind of been doing this for a good amount of time, where do you see yourself going in the future with this? I don't know. I don't know. I, I have, like I said, I have two young daughters. One's fifteen, and one's ten. So college is right around the corner. You know, you know, married with two kids. You know, you just you think about your future, but then also their future is creeping up also. Mm-hmm. So you got to prepare for that all. You know, in addition. So I. I I don't know. I like what I'm doing. I like being able to give back in, in the community, whether it be the different little midget league teams or you know churches or events or basketball teams or whatever. I like that aspect and the freedom of not having to worry about going to a committee and see if I can get it approved. You know, just hey, just cut the check. You know, they 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 need this. Okay, cut the if you're available if you're able to do it, cut the check. Mm-hmm. So I like the freedom of what I'm doing right now. But five years, who knows? Who knows? I mean, I, like I said, I really like what I'm doing now. I'm getting more into property. Okay. On, on the side, but that's that's a whole nother story. Yeah, that's a whole nother beast. Yeah, yeah a whole nother story. Okay. Yeah. Any uh, potential aspirations to maybe write another book, maybe speaking engagements? I don't know. Anything like that in the I future? I don't know. No, I, prior to sitting down here, I didn't think about that. Okay. But, but maybe I need to start thinking about that. But definitely a book release. Okay. Definitely a book release. You, you should definitely do that yeah, first, yeah, for sure. You should definitely, definitely book get release. a book release. Speaking engagement, I've done a couple. Like, I go to schools and talk to, to young men and women about what to do when, you know, stop by police and how to handle certain situations when you're charged with a crime or a citation. Talk to them about that often because I would rather me, I would rather them see me in that setting versus me walking in in a courtroom mm-hmm. and they're sitting beside me in a defense chair. So if I can get to them early, that's great. Yeah. That, that, that's awesome. But a couple other speaking engagements too, like back home in West Virginia, I, I talked to different students there also done a couple done a commencement address which which is really cool mm-hmm. but other than that man nothing nothing planned okay nothing planned. all right yeah, yeah. There ain't nothing wrong with that i mean yeah. you're, you're you're in the right place um doing what you need to be doing yes so absolutely that's that's definitely awesome yeah. um so as we get closer to wrapping up is there any you know maybe you know final thoughts that you maybe have on your mind for you know maybe the audience or maybe some insight on into your world or anything at all any final thoughts that you may have to to add any more value to the people that may be watching i think people always ask me when they find out i'm attorney they'll say you know what do you think about police shootings what do you think about the you know kids getting out the car and run and you know what are people supposed to do at a i mean can we record can we do this most people are looking for confirmation of what they already think is the right thing in their mind i won't give them that my main advice for people who get stopped by police, your main singular goal is to get home to your family. If you got to say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir, no, ma'am, 40 times, swallow your pride, do that, take the ticket, and get home. Don't be up there trying to reach for your phone, trying to record and put everything live. None of that. Just get home to your family. You can fight about it later. Don't be trying to argue with anybody. Else. You're not going to change a person's mind. You're just not going to do it. Then we try to resist or just get home. That's the main thing. Get home to your family. Call a lawyer, like I said, whether it's me. I love saying whether it's me or someone else. There's a lot of other attorneys out there who are very good at what they do. Call a lawyer and then fight it later on. But don't be trying to just do it at the scene and end up a hashtag somewhere. And that, that's what you don't want to do. Mm. Other than that, final thoughts about you know, being an entrepreneur. You know, I, I like what you're doing, bringing other entrepreneurs on the show, and I appreciate you bringing me on. And I listen to other people talk about their struggles. And everyone, it's, it's a similar struggle. The main thing is the thought process in the very beginning. You have to make the decision to do it. You have to make a decision to jump. I think Steve Harvey had a little short video talking about, you know, you got to jump off that cliff. That's, that's real. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is real because your mind is like, oh, well, I really need that check every Friday. I really need that check every other Friday, every other Thursday. Listen, you know, what's the saying? Scary money don't make money? It's not. If you're going to stay there for the rest of your life, you can do that. Live a comfortable life. Do the same thing. That's fine. 
But if you want to do something exceptional, give back to your community and be in a position where you can provide for your family and do other things that you couldn't ordinarily do in your, your regular nine to five, jump out there, be an entrepreneur. You know, whether it's starting a dental practice, a marketing firm, a start uh, being a pastor, writing a book, doing whatever you want to do, you have to. I have a saying, you know, get hungry or be hungry. You mm. know, it, it's get hungry trying to start a dream or be hungry in the, in the, in the realm of having that regret. Ten years later, you watch other people do the things you said you were going to do or you thought you were going to do, but you didn't. Mm. And now you're sitting there ten years later watching if somebody else with the side eye like, yeah, whatever, you know. You, you ain't all that. But really, yeah, you wanted to be in their position, but you didn't. But right. you never got hungry. And that's 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 my mindset. You know, get hungry, be hungry. You know, you have to do that. Mm-hmm. So that's my, that's my final piece of advice. That is really good. That That is a really good message for sure. I mean, you hit on a lot of good things on there for sure. Um, I'm definitely turning that into the clip. I'm saying that right now. <laughs> that, was, that was good. I'm sitting here thinking like, man, that was powerful. Yeah. That was really good. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as like even, you know, just get home. Like, that's a... Oh yeah, extremely powerful message. I I've been fortunate enough to not be in that situation where you know I've been pulled over or anything like that. You know I thank God for that. But you know there are some unfortunate situations where somebody didn't get the opportunity to make it home. So yeah. you know that's you know that in itself is really good information for sure. And, and, and you know like you say you can fight it later. Fight um, it later. Um, fight it later. But um, yeah, as we get closer to wrapping up, um, where would be um, – actually, I want to uh, frame this up before I get to the last question. So the last question that I always ask is where's the best place for people to contact you and then also a 24-hour challenge um, that you would propose to the audience the, uh, that they can actually take action on. So with all the information that you gave in this episode, what's something that they can actually do? Um, and actually take away from this. Um, so before, so get, get, kind of give you some time to think on that. Um, before that, where is the best place to contact you if somebody you know were to get in trouble or if they kind of just want to save it in your phone for later? Um, where would be the best places for people to contact you? FrankWalkerLaw.com. It's the easiest, easiest way to get to me. You can send an instant email, or my phone number 20, answers 24 hours a day. 412-532-6805. Now, to be clear, which camera are we on? Center camera. Center. I'm not answering 24 hours a day, <laughs> but someone will answer that phone 24 hours a day, and they will get the message to me. Just give them the message, and I will get that message in and give you a call back. But 412-532-6805 or frankwalkerlaw.com. Awesome. Yeah, because you can't be blowing this, blowing his phone up all the time. He, no, he, no, he does you, got a family to take care yeah, of. People. And you will, you will, you will quickly get to the block list quickly. <laughs> and I can scroll my block list. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Um, and then as we get closer to wrapping up, what is a twenty four hour challenge that you would propose to the audience that they can actually take action on? Like, what can they actually do? What should people do moving forward from after watching this episode? If you are thinking about starting your own business and moving forward as an entrepreneur, get a piece of paper and write it and take a Sharpie and write down your goals for one year. Mm. Put it on your refrigerator. Take a picture and send it to a family member or your best friend. That way they will hold you accountable. Mm-hmm. They will, and it, it could be mm-hmm. as a result of an argument a year later, well, well, you said you was going to do this. I got proof. Here it is. Mm-hmm. Now... You're in a position where, okay, now you have to prove not only to yourself but to your friend that you can do this. Mm-hmm. You've been thinking about it for years. You've been wanting to do it. Just do it. Mm-hmm. Just absolutely get hungry because if not, it could be years. And now you're looking back thinking, wow, back in 2018, I could have did this. I should have did this, but I didn't. I never got hungry. And that is that is a it is a defeating mindset because you look back 10 years, for example, Look at Facebook. Mm-hmm. Facebook started with 2003. Something like that. I'm looking back. What was I? I was in, I just graduated law school 2003. Mm-hmm. I'm looking back. What was I doing? You know, maybe I think it was bartender or something, hustling, working at UPS, doing all these other things. But someone else is starting a, a company, a billion dollar company, and we didn't even know about it in a dorm room, you know. And they're just, they, he got an idea, he got hungry, and he took off with it. Now, 18 years later, or however many years later, 15 years later, here we are using that same product that he started in his dorm room. Mm-hmm. And he just got hungry. Yeah. So just 24-hour challenge, write it down on a piece of paper, take a picture, send it to a friend or family member, put it on your refrigerator, look at it every day. Mm-hmm. Put it beside your door, look at it every single day. And pretty soon, you'll start marking things off that list. Oh, I did this. I did that. It could be something simple. Mm-hmm. You know, join a gym. 
write a manuscript for a book, you know, apply for this job, apply to go back to school, get the application to go mm-hmm. back to school. You know, so many different things that you want to do, you've been thinking about doing, just do it. Mm-hmm. Just do it. Something simple. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And and I really like the part where you say, you know, taking a picture and sending it to somebody yeah. because that person can keep you accountable. Absolutely. Because not only do you know what your goals is, it's like, okay, now somebody else knows. Somebody else knows. And if you don't reach that goal, it's like, you know, where, where you at on they're that? They're looking at you. Right. And, at, and, and you don't want that look. Nope. <laughs> so, nope. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and another thing is like to that point, I would say, you know, if there is something that you want to pursue or there's something in your heart, like you don't want to, you know, five, ten years down the line, feel regret. And nope. and I know for me, like, I don't want to feel that regret. Like, there, if there's something that I'm passionate about, I want to go all in. So you don't want to look back, you know, 10, five years ago and be like, man, I, I could have did this. I should have did that. You know, you don't want to live that, you know, could have, should have type of stuff, you know, in the future. So, you know, definitely write them down. And Absolutely. it feels and it feels good when you're able to yeah. cross that stuff off. It feels very, or you look back a year later even if you didn't, let's say you forgot about it, but you're actually, because you're in, a, in the process of doing those things and you look back, you're like, wow, I did this. Now I can add more things. Mm-hmm. I'm going to add more things. And you become, I think you become more productive. I mean, there's there's nothing more frustrating than seeing guys at the, I think Randy Moss talked about it and in, in, on the show 30 for 30, Rand University, which is a, a real place, 7-Eleven up in Bell, West Virginia, where there's a bunch of guys who were played in high school. They were really good. And they didn't do anything else. They didn't go to college. They just hanging out, drinking, smoking, talking about what I used to do. Oh man, I remember back in nineteen eighty four, I had two hundred yards. Okay, but now what? Yeah, you know they peaked. That was their peak. And you don't want to peak in high school. You want to peak. Oh yeah. You don't want to do. You don't want to yeah. be that person. You yeah. Don't want I, to be I'm that already person. thinking of people right yeah. now that are like, man, back in high school, yeah. it's like. Yeah. Dude, that was like 10 years yeah. ago. Like, what have you been up to lately? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like that Jetta Jackson song. Yeah, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> guys what have you there. done lately? Yo, there's guys out there like, yeah, man, Frank, you're doing it big now. But I remember back when, when I used to, you know, I used to dunk on y'all. Okay, that's cool. Right. Like, you know, 20, 30 years ago. <laughs> but okay, that's, right. you got me. Right. You got it's me. Okay, like, I'll give you that. Yeah. I'll give you that. You know, but just... Don't be that. Don't be that person. Right. Don't be that person. Absolutely. Well, I definitely appreciate you being on the show. No definitely problem. a lot of good information and insight. I hope a lot of people got a good, uh, a lot of good information out of the show as well. A lot of good uh, added value to them. So I definitely appreciate you for coming on. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so now that we know what Frank Walker does with his twenty four hours, I want to know what you do with your twenty four hours. Definitely make sure you accept that challenge. Absolutely. And if you do accept that challenge, let us know of your journey through that. Make sure you comment. If you got any questions, either for myself or Frank, make sure you hit him up on his website. If you need any additional information or anything of that nature, definitely make sure you hit him up. But um, that is our time. Definitely love and appreciate y'all that watch and follow. Um, You can see the next episode next week. Just make sure you subscribe, like, share, turn on notifications, and we will see you on the next episode.